Hello and welcome to another year of the Hyundai Archer World Cup and we are back in Medellin uh, in the center of Latin America in Colombia. I'm joined by Peter Elzinger and Chef Vandenberg for the first episode of our archery show. Thanks for coming guys. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Cool. Um, tell us where we are, tell us what we're doing here and tell us what's going on today and during this week, Peter. We are in Colombia uh, in uh, some lovely sunny weather and uh, we are here for the first World Cup of the year. Yeah, the weather has been great. It's, um, it's been a little bit windy, uh, but the conditions are very good. Cool. And how have your competitions been going so far? Well, mine has actually been, been really good. Um, I qualified third uh, with some really good scores and in tough conditions, but I'm really pleased with uh, where I am. And I have uh, pretty much only shot the qualification yet. And uh, that was decent, but not, I have not shown yet what I'm capable of. So there's, cool. there's more in the tank. What do you guys think about Colombia in general? We haven't been here for a few years. Uh, the, the, the World Cup was here for four years a while ago. Um, what, what's your kind of general, general impressions of the place? Well, I actually really enjoyed here, but that's also because I have some good memories here uh, previous years that I shot here. So uh, in general, I, I really like the country as, uh, as well. Yep. Yeah. For me, it might, it might sound like I don't care, but it's just another South American country. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's warm and uh, there's a lot of people packed at one place. But uh, yeah, it's good to shoot. Yeah, and we've had a long off season, you know, there have been the indoor tournaments, but this collection, this group of people haven't been together for quite a while. What's it like to come back at the start of the year, say hello to everyone, get back in the groove? Well, actually, it's really nice to actually see, uh, see each other again and, and compete uh, against each other. Uh, I think uh, the crowd has been, uh, been been good here. Yeah, especially the the level has has gone up. I think maybe because of the the long off season, uh, people have had a lot of uh, time to prepare for this uh, first World Cup. And you can see at least in the, in our category that the, the scores have have gone through the roof. You're one of the culprits, aren't you? You've had some some big scores recently. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, I've taken some time to prepare as well. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with how it's going right now. Uh, you had um, we had six. 692, the leader in the Rico men's division. Yeah. Three people on that. Um, I was the best of the rest. You were the best. <laughs> <laughs> Story of your life, chef. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the the um, 692. I mean, you know. Getting a big score in archery is not, not difficult. You think about all, not easy, sorry. You think about all the things you've got to do over the course of a 72 hour round, all the, the just misses, the millimeters that matter here and there. To have three people finish on a, high, a score as high as 692 and on 692, I find it quite, you know, like almost not real. It kind of defies the statistics, doesn't it? Yeah, it sort of does. But on the other, on the other hand, the, the weather was pretty much the best weather I've ever had on the World Cup. So, yeah, I would say that uh, it's, yeah. It's partly due to the circumstances that we had. Do you think the score should have been higher? Uh, my score should have been higher, but um, I think you, if you look across the board, you can see that the level has been very high. I think the top eight was uh, 682, so that says enough about the level, I think. Okay, Peter, um, we're going to look at this in a bit, in a bit um, but you, you won here in 2014. Um, yes. That's your only win on the World Cup to date. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you said happy memories about Medellin. What do you remember? Well, um, uh, yeah, again, I had a good competition here and uh, the year that I won, uh, obviously I had to wait about uh, eight years to finally uh, win one um, and, and still the only one. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy shooting here and the venue back then was, was really awesome and uh, the crowd was, was really good. Uh, I even shot against uh, Daniel, uh, who shot a really good, uh, good round as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to be back here. Cool. Um, after this event, we're going to Shanghai in one week's time. Then we're going to Antalya. Then one week, and we're going to the Netherlands for the World Championships. Both of you are Dutch. We've got a theme today. Um, what are you guys looking forward to about having a Worlds at home? I think it will be great. Uh, I, I think it's been years uh, since we had a, a, a good tournament like, uh, like that. We had the Europeans uh, a couple of years ago in 2014 as well. Uh, 12. Oh, in 2012. <laughs> and, um, and that was actually the last big one that we, that we had. So we are really looking forward to, uh, to the World Championships. Does it feel a bit different, the kind of schedule for the year uh, to either of you? Like, knowing it, that you've got this, this event at home. In to the me, it's, um, it all leads up to the World Championships uh, in, in my mind. Um, 
and the World Championships are not even the last uh, competition of the season, but before the World Championships, it's very packed. So it's like a, a week uh, not at home and then a week at home, and, and it sort of alternates between those. Um, so if, to me, it's just a very busy season in the beginning of the year, but then a lot of time off after to uh, sort of recuperate and uh, get some, uh, some holiday hours in. You're going to Berlin after the Worlds yeah. or not? Yeah. You'll probably so. shoot better in Berlin than you shoot all the rest if that's the end of your season there. Yeah, I, I might. <laughs> I, I hope not. I hope I, uh, I do the best one here and then uh, see where I go from there. But we'll never know. <laughs> we will know. Yeah, maybe. Soon enough. <laughs> um, uh, Den Bosch, like, it's been a while since that event was announced. There's been quite a lot of you know slow build up to it. I know you've done some promotional stuff uh, about it in the Netherlands. What? Do you know anything about the event? Can you tell us anything about the event? Um, I know a little bit, but I try to stay out of it as much as I can because I just want to prepare uh, as if I would for a normal competition. So for a World Cup or any other World Championships, I don't want to make it special because then I'll just uh, act differently. And uh, I think the way I've been shooting is good enough. Good stuff. Peter, you've got a, um, a shop not far away. You say not far away, yeah. but nothing's that far away in the Netherlands. No. Is it? <laughs> no. Um, you know, you close your shop when you, you travel abroad sometimes. Yes, correct. Are you well, gonna actually, all the time. Yeah. yeah? yeah. You're going to close your shop while you, you, you shoot in the Nether? In yeah. yeah, for sure, because I want to prepare the best I can for the, for the World Championship. So I don't want to interact with my shop and, and, and be at the World Championship to try and to be on my best there. So um, you're not going to so do evening hours? No. You could do a qualification round, drive and, and, me and, uh, and, and drive back, no. No, thanks, but no. <laughs> yeah, 72 arrows, go and tune a couple of bows back in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. It could, but I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, just running a shop in general, how is that as, a, as an active archer? Like, it oh, it's, it's hard, it's a busy time. Uh, in, in, in general, in a week, I make uh, between uh, 70 and 90 hours a week on, on archery and my shop. Mm. So it's, it's hard, uh, it's, it's good to combine, but uh, it's, it's a hard time. Y you love archery, I assume? Yeah. Um, how do I say this? Working full time on your shop, with it's archery. Shooting full time on your shop, the archery. Uh, has that affected your love for archery at all? No, not at all. I still enjoy it every single day. It's more, um, it's more like when I don't shoot or I'm not in a shop, I am actually more unhappy than 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 I'm doing those those things. Do you have any hobbies? No. Yeah, Vanessa, but it's. I don't know if that's if that's a hobby. Are you calling your wife a hobby? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, no. I I really enjoy the time off with with my wife actually, and um, uh, that's that's for me the, the quality time that I actually have. And she shares archery with you as well. Yes, correct. She's a golf professional, but uh, she she does a lot of archery as well. So, yeah. Do you teach her archery, and she teaches you golf? Or? A, little, a little, but but not as much as I as you wish because I have no time. <laughs> <laughs> How's how good's your golf? Uh, my golf is not that ver very good. No, <laughs> no, not at all. What's oh. your handicap? I don't even have a handicap. Okay. No. <laughs> There's always time. There's yeah. always time. Yeah. So yeah, we said um, five years ago here you won. We've got a small clip of you winning, so we're going to watch that. Um, although you can't really see it here. And then if you can talk us through what you were feeling, uh, we're going to start from the last ends. So. Let's go. What were you feeling during this event and um, when you're on that final spill of play? Yeah, again, I, I was actually trying to, to maintain my focus as, as good as I, as I could. Actually, like I, like I said, it's, uh, it's been eight, it was eight years uh, since I even uh, won the tournament. And uh, obviously that, that's a lot of pressure for me on, on that time as well. So I tried to maintain focus and just shoot my shots. And even the last arrow as well that I had to shoot, it was... I was nervous, but I um, I knew if I just sh shot it, it was it, it should be good enough, and that's actually what I did. And I um, I had a uh, I had a really awesome time there. So that's that last arrow. Um, talk to me about the feeling of, of of that when it landed. Yeah, well, you can you can see it in the reaction as well. It was kind of a relief that I finally got one. And that, and that was it. And know? that was it. Yeah, I was really extremely happy that I that I won won it. Yeah. Because you'd been you'd been close, but not not close enough before, right? Yeah, yeah. I've actually I think uh, a couple of times I've been close enough. I lost it on a shoot off a couple of times, mm. um, and uh, yeah, obviously that that eats on you. But um, uh, this one was was a good one. Yeah. Okay, and then after that event, so uh, you got back home. You thought about it. Um, how, how do you reflect on on winning that? Winning that event now, and in, in terms of your whole career as an archer. Well, um, it's it's been um, that's been hard because um, 
actually when you win one and that's uh well if you have a, like uh, a little bucket list for for yourself i think every archer has that so uh, actually i well that one th that i had but obviously that's not it mm, it's it it's always that that you want more and want to try more to to win more tournaments i that still didn't do that uh, so uh, i'm still hungry on, on that what else is on your bucket list well i'm still not a world champion so that's something i would really want um, mm. and that would probably be it Okay. And what's on your bucket list, sir? Uh, an Olympic gold. In the first place, an Olympic medal. But I, I'm really gunning for Olympic gold. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Tokyo. It can be Paris. It can be LA. I just want one. We're not getting rid of you until that's done. That's uh, you're oh, stuck. That's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just have to text my girlfriend and say, in saying that I won't retire for uh, for a while. Except when I do it in Tokyo, I might have a different opinion on that. Will you finish? Do you think when you've won Olympic gold? No. I don't think I'll ever finish. No? Uh, I think I'll stop a professional shooting career when somebody from my team uh, or when uh, essentially three people from my team are better than me. Um, but I don't see that happening in the near future. Oh, you've got a strong team. Uh, yeah. Both of you have a strong team. Uh, the whole Dutch men's side is, is pretty incredible. Um, why do you think that is? How, where does that come from? Um, I think there is a certain chemistry in our team. Uh, in, in the whole team, but especially uh, in, in the separate teams. Um, yeah, we're just, yeah, it, it works well. We, we work well as a team and, and uh, we train together a lot. I think it's, uh, it's more of a matter of mental toughness uh, and, and mental preparation than uh, the, the technical aspect of shooting because we are not all uh, great examples of technical shooting. But uh, the fact that we train so much together and that we constantly on training show each other uh, what's possible with a bow and arrow, I think that makes everyone better. The, um, that kind of, you know, having three members of the team that are strong or having other people to train around you that are strong, some people don't have it. You know, Sarah and, and Alejandro came up the same time here in Colombia, but other countries have one one person is good. Do you think you're yeah, at an advantage where you have a group of you at a level that can you push each other? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah for me exactly the same. Uh, there's no doubt that better archers will make you better. Mm -hmm. So if you practice with better archers, it, it will make you better. Uh, so you were around before Mike came up, um, <laughs> uh, you know, and how was that whole experience for you? Let's talk about that. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe I can learn something from this. Uh, <laughs> well, it's been... Uh, it's, it's obviously that's not easy mm. yeah, to, to have uh, like Mike come around and actually take your spot. Uh, that's that's not easy, but uh, still I'm cheering for him. Um, I was not jealous, and I'm trying to um, uh, to be helpful for him as well. Um, what it actually did with me, um, he actually raised the bar, but he also raised my bar. Mm. So uh, I I shot better as well, and that's what I said uh, just a minute ago train with better archers you will get better and uh, that's what Mike actually did for me as well. Well if we talk about when you won here in 2014 Mike had won the world championships the year before so you'd been trying for eight years and you get another guy on your team who's pushing wins the world championships yeah. and then you come out and finally win your world cup I mean correct yeah. talk about evidence of that it's, yeah. it's right there yeah cool um, and then um, in terms of practical uh, training among that team how does that work? Do you do you train together? Do you push each other at home in the Netherlands? I know you both travel a lot. You both have other commitments. Yeah, well, actually, um, we as a compound group are uh, every Tuesday evening, we are uh, at the central uh, training center. So we, we train with each other. Uh, but for the rest, uh, it, it's everyone at home. But obviously, Netherlands is not that big. Um, so if we want to practice or train with each other, you know, well, it's it's around the corner. So it's not that not, not that far. But for the recurve guys, it's something different because they are at Papendal, yeah. uh, at the National Olympic uh, Center, and they actually practice almost every day with yeah. each other. Four out of five people, four out of five people in the team practice together every day. So that's uh, Steve, Gijs, Jan, and me, and then Rick. Uh, goes in uh, three times a week, I think, uh, to train with us. So we're basically living together. That's, uh, and I think uh, that creates a very strong bond and uh, that also helps in knowing what to say at which moment and knowing what not to say at which moment. So uh, that helps a lot in uh, building a strong team, I think.
Well, you, you named five names there of, of, of top recurves in, in the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, so you've got your three and you've got two that are pushing or, yeah. or kind of some that are interchanging. Um, and now, how important is to keep having those, those next level, that, that kind of B team that can push the A's as well? And how do you keep that going? Um, well, I think the, the third spot in our team is not uh, poured in concrete. I think uh, Steve and I are at this, at this moment, we are at the, the top level in the Netherlands. And then uh, the third spot sort of rotates. Um, and uh, Gijs this week has, uh, has showed some promising things already. He shot a 341 uh, just the other day. Uh, Jan has shot several 340s. And uh, now Rick is back in, uh, at a high level as well. So I think those three are constantly trying to beat each other. And uh, that makes the whole the general level a bit higher. Were you the third member of the team at one point? Uh, I think the moment I came into the team, I sort of stepped into the second place and I never really went below that. And, and Steve as well, he kind of jumped the, yeah. the, the rotation. Yeah. Would you like uh, to be in that third spot? <laughs> I wouldn't mind per se, but uh, obviously I, uh, I, I'm comfortable where I am right now. I'm, uh, I'm sitting uh, up high with Steve and uh, uh, I know that the others are knocking on the door, but uh, for this, uh, at this particular moment, we're, uh, we're doing well as a, as a whole team. And talk, talking about um, the level and pushing the level of each other, uh, you shot your 691 on the Friday and 692 or 691. 691 yeah. on the fr on the Friday in Antalya at the the. Uh, oh, that was a, that was a 690. Yeah. Oh, 690, and yeah. then a couple of days later, uh, Mete, you, you were the first European to shoot yeah. 690. A couple of days later, Mete goes out and shoots 698. Yeah. Um, how did you f how did you feel shooting your 691, 690? I shot 690 and then in Romania when Mete shot a 698, I also shot a 691. So I beat my own record, but he beat it by eight points. Um, and obviously I would have liked to uh, raise the bar myself, but um, when I shot my 690 in Turkey, I expected Mete to be closer than he was uh, that day. Uh, and I sort of expected him to beat it, but I figured that if I was, uh, I beat it sooner than he did, uh, I would sort of be able to raise the bar. But he. Uh, managed to do it on the same day and um, I have nothing but respect. I mean, uh, there is no doubt in the world that Meta is an exceptional archer and um, I was expecting him to beat my 690, but I didn't expect it so soon. Okay. I'm like, uh, I have this theory, right? Tell me if I'm wrong, that the only physical attributes that make that give you a bit of an advantage if you're a recurve archer are long arms and long fingers. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> massive hands. Look at those massive hands. Compare them to compare those to pieces. Massive hands, massive hands. Mete also has huge long arms. Yeah, um, I don't think it's the only the only advantage you can have as a recurve archer, but it, I think it might help. Uh, then again, I, I don't think Kim Woojin has very long arms, and um, he is uh, perhaps the best archer in the world at this moment. So. So no. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah. Or he might be the exception to the rule. You never know. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Guys, we're going to have a little uh, little game here and see how well you know each other. You've been in the you've been in the team together for quite some time, so I'm going to give you these. I'm going to I'm going to ask a question. He's been looking at your questions already. No, you can't read my writing. I can I can guarantee <laughs> that. Um, I'm going to ask one of you a question, and then you're going to write the answer on the sheet of paper so the other one can't see. Then the other one's going to answer the question, and we're going to see how close you were to the answer. Does that make sense? No, but I'll get okay. it along the way. So you pick up a piece of paper, and I want to know what is Peter's best, personal best in qualifying. And he can't say I, anything until you write I an have answer. A, I have a correct answer on this, but it, it's outdated. <laughs> so it's not correct, is what it is. <laughs> it depends on what distance. <laughs> 50 meters. 50 meters. 50 what, meters. On, in, on one round or a double? Uh, no, like a standard qualifying ranking round. Maximum score 720 with 72 X's. Start saying numbers and see when his eyelids flicker. That's what <laughs> that I wrote down two answers. No, 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 you can't write down two <laughs> answers, Jeff. Right. I, I want to have one right for sure. So cross out one of them and then we can have one answer. Okay. <laughs> right. What is your personal best, Peter? Seven, uh, 716. 716. Chef, what did you write down? <laughs> <laughs> 714. Uh, 
But yeah. I also wrote down 1,419. <laughs> Which is? Because that's legendary uh, FIDA world record that Peter shot. Well, when was that again? When was that quite a while ago? 2010 or something? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah. I was there. Back in the good old days. Yeah. Right. Peter's turn. He gets the pen and the paper. How old was Chef when he started archery? <laughs> <laughs> we literally were talking a minute ago, <laughs> and then he asked me the same question. So if he gets it wrong, I think he should get a minus point. <laughs> How old were you when he started archery, Chef? I was four years old. Four years old. <laughs> so Peter wins. <laughs> chef. <laughs> what color bow is Peter shooting right now? <laughs> Named or what it's called? I want the exact Pantone, yeah, or so. <laughs> Go on, Peter. It's electric teal. I got teal, minty. Teal. I got yeah. minty. Teal or minty? <laughs> I, I kind of prefer minty. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, right, Peter. Right. What? What does Peter rank as his biggest archery achievement? Oh no, hang on. Wrong way around. What does Chef rank as his biggest archery achievement? Um, and a qualifying. No, no, just what does he believe is his biggest archery achievement? Oh. oh. I'll be interested to see what he says because I am not sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, still, I, I... Ah, in that case, I could... <laughs> Which answer do you want to give? The one that Peter's put down? Yeah, or? exactly. I think I know what he put down, yeah. and I can say something else, but then I would be lying. Yeah. Yeah, it's the fourth place in Rio still. Yeah. The fourth place at Rio. Yeah. Cool. Swap over. This is for this is for Peter, isn't it? Uh, if Peter was not doing what he was doing right now, professional archer and owning an archery shop, what would he do for a living? What would you do for a living, Peter? Well, probably if I didn't had a chance to be in a professional archer, I will probably still be a carpenter. Carpenter? <laughs> He's gone for coaching. Coaching, yeah, well, all right, but that's still something into archery. So yes, yeah. but you're not a professional archer anymore. Ah, okay. Were you, were you a carpenter before? Yep. What did you make? Anything? Buildings. Uh, yeah, buildings, uh, well. Cool. There we yes. go. Yeah. But better. <laughs> well, I think I think chef chef is right on 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 the coaching uh, thing. I think that would be. Um, do you, do, you be. do you coach now? Or? Yeah. So yeah. Who do you coach? Well, actually, uh, every Thursday evening I have a group on my club that I that I coach. Uh, among them are, for example, uh, Rick Van Okay. Uh, Inge van Kaspel, uh, oh. and a couple of others. Yeah. Cool. Last cool. question. We're going to move on. You get the paper, chef. Who would chef say is his favorite teammate on the Dutch team? <laughs> you have to pick one. You have to pick one and write it down. <laughs> current teammate, current teammate. Just, just to make it. Okay, who is it, Chef? I think that would be guys because we have a YouTube channel together. He's, go he's gone for me. He's gone for I, Steve. Ah, oh. Steve. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. Um, moving on. That was fun. Archery is a difficult game because only one person wins. Yeah. Well, you said we found the. Um, you had your one win in Medellin. You've had lots of lots of events where you came close. Um, and and chef, I know I know you struggled when you came you came fourth at the Olympics. You missed out on a medal by not very much at all. How do we deal with that as, as archers? Um, for sure, this is not a sport that um, creates only one winner, like a Michael Phelps or, uh, or other uh, good uh, sportsmen or athletes. Um, this is really a sport from, it comes down to a millimeter. Um, and that's a very hard combination on, on, uh, on a sport. Okay. And, and Chef, 
what, what would you say is there a practical way we deal with that as artists um, I think you have to be very rational sometimes you have to be able to recognize your own qualities uh, and say like okay I shot a good match but the other person shot a better match um, in case you didn't shoot a good match, I think that's the perfect moment to learn something from it and to, to get some information from it that you can uh, work with in the future. So um, yeah, that's basically, you can only do your best and then if your opponent shoots better, uh, that's that's it. But if you're, uh, if you're winning with a good match, that's always nice. If you're losing with a good match, yeah, that's, uh, that's a shame, but there's nothing you can do about it and you have to go home with, uh, uh, yeah, with a good feeling in the end. It's the same. Um, it's the same kind of the vein of things. You know, people win and they they come and go in archery. But consistency is is a very difficult thing to achieve, wouldn't you say? Um, when you come to an event like this, are you looking to win or are you looking to achieve a level? Um, I always want to win. That's why I, why I do this and uh, what I will come for. Uh, so there's only one spot. And you want it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, for for me it is uh, winning is is for me everything. But obviously there are uh, there are times that that you know and you're coming to um, uh, to a tournament and you shot good and and, and reasonable. It's, it not mean I'm unhappy or not satisfied with what I achieved. But if I go to a tournament, I want to win. Fair enough. Um, what about you, Chef? Uh, and in the same same vein, um, re qualification obviously is a part of a tournament and it's a part of a tournament that a lot of archers look at because it's a, it's a level that's very measurable yeah. whereas matches are perhaps difficult to measure against. Is the level important or is it all about the, the final? I think in the end it's all about the finals um, but I know that there are some cases of archers who are not very good at qualification rounds because it's a, like it's a very long attention span, you have to shoot six arrows instead of three uh, and they sort of live up in their uh, final rounds so they, they become a better archer when they only have to shoot three arrows uh, and I don't necessarily have that. Steve is one of them. Steve is one of them. Steve is a very good example. Uh, although Steve has been uh, upping up his uh, or upping his game in, in qualification rounds as well. He's uh, he shot a 6.9 or 6.82 yeah. here so that's good. I mean uh, there's nothing to complain about that. Um, but that's a, a difficult thing for me to, to understand because I always try to if I pull back an arrow I want to hit the middle with it and um, uh, to me it seems that some archers when they shoot a qualification round they just shoot it because they have to and then in the finals they really start to uh, bring their uh, their top game um, so I'm trying to uh, take a different approach this year and uh, to really um, go into the finals with the the goal to win the match uh, instead of just to bring my uh, my a game and uh, we'll see uh, how that's going to work out this year okay um, do you think it's a different mentality between Combat and Recurve, given the different rules? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I feel in Recurve you can uh, you can take more risk. You can uh, you can say, okay, this this end I'm just going in uh, because it's set system. So if it doesn't work, you've got that set done, and then the next set is uh, you, you both start at zero again. Whereas with Compound, if you go all in and, and you have a major mess up, um, yeah, you have a problem the rest of the match. You agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Agree totally. But, um, obviously, the scores are more combined to each other on on, on the compound scene. Uh, so um, a mistake there is well, it's difficult. <laughs> and and um, you know, you know when you've made that mistake before the arrow has landed more often than not. Yeah. Um, but you still got to shoot the rest of the match. Uh, how does that go through your mind, and and, and how do you reset? Oh, I will try to reset right away because it's already there, and, and I won't say. I will do that every single time, uh, but I'm trying. I'm trying to do uh, to do that. If I shot a bad shot, or you know, it's it's already there. I can do it. I, the only thing I can do is is prepare for my next arrow and shoot as as best as I can. I have a question for you, Peter. Um, in in recurve archery, if you shoot a very bad shot, you know you're going to lose a set. Uh, so the other two arrows, or if it's the first arrow, you, the other two arrows, you just shoot away and uh, you don't think too much about it. Uh, and then you start at zero again and you go all in again. Uh, let's say in compound you, sh you shoot a horrible arrow and you, you score very bad. How do you shoot the rest of the match if it's the first or second end? How do you go into the rest of the match? Do you, do you still try to catch the other guy or do you just... Sure, but, but uh, what, I, uh, what I personally do, I will always shoot against myself. Okay. I, will, I will always uh, try to do my best and, and shoot my shot every single time. Even if I had a bad arrow, 
it again is already there and I'm trying to do my best because the other guy can also make that mistake yeah. um, and, and then in, in some cases you you can catch up and in some cases you can't you know I shot against uh, Stefan Hansen on, on the indoor on the World Cup final he shot a 150 I shot a 149 and uh, it was my last arrow was was barely out um, and and yeah well that that's it yeah it, and even if I shot my first end and it was my first arrow was uh, was a was a 29 uh, and my first arrow was a nine I couldn't catch up either but but still I'm trying to do my shot every single time and um, and leave it where it is and if it had been your first arrow that was the nine, it might have been a different match altogether. Correct. Could be. It could be. Okay, cool. So, uh, two days left before the finals of this competition. What's on your agendas for tomorrow? Well, the individual matches, obviously. Um, and, and, yeah, uh, it's, it's always easy to say, well, we'll see what happens. But um, uh, it, it doesn't work like that. Uh, well, I will try um, uh, to, uh, to shoot uh, as good as I can. And I... Actually, I really hope uh, to do top five here. Uh, who have you got in your first match? Um, I, I believe someone from the Dominican. Okay, and, and you? Uh... I have to shoot against my teammate, my favorite teammate, as I just <laughs> said. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how he shoots. And I know that I'm uh, in a very good shape right now. So uh, I think he'll have to bring a very good match. Yeah. Happy if he remains a third member of the team for tomorrow. For tomorrow, yeah. And <laughs> after that, he can uh, start growing again. Okay. What do you think both of your chances are in this tournament? If I shoot like I know I can shoot, uh, I think I'll be shooting on Sunday still. Um, but in the qualification uh, round, my rhythm wasn't quite there. So um, I'll have to really uh, try to perform this week. Yeah, I, I think for me, there will be some really tough matches. Um, uh, I hope to be there on, on, on Saturday, but it will be tough. Okay, cool. Thanks very much for joining me, guys. Uh, thank you for, for watching. We'll be back in two weeks' time in Shanghai. Uh, as for the rest of this week in Colombia, enjoy it, and hope to see you both there uh, on the weekend. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye.